to go. Okay. Thanks. Hi and good evening, everyone. Okay. Hi and good evening, everyone. So for most of you that don't know me, I'm Vanessa. I'm currently working at uh, NUS and as an IT analyst and doing software development and some network infrastructure. Uh, previously, I'm also working with IBM doing the uh, uh, technology innovations team uh, using the technology adoption program. So this is a, um, a technology adoption program for uh, internal web research and development for IBM. Okay, so all right, let's go for the topic for tonight, taming your dev environment with Vagrant. Vagrant is actually one of the most favorite tool of mine. And I often uh, <coughs> ask my team to use this in, the, in their de web development. Um, because, of course, we're, when we do web development and in, in our local machine and then moving to production, right, we have a, we mostly encounter several problems. So can anyone guess what are the problems that we mostly encounter when doing our local development to uh, production. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the most um, uh, problem that we get. So it works on my machine. Um, sometimes it works on my machine and then it doesn't work uh, in production. Or also it works on my machine, but it doesn't work on your teammate's computer because you have a different uh, environment overall. Your your teammate might be using Mac OS and you're using Windows. Some are using uh, Linux. The second one is it previously worked on my machine, but now suddenly it's not working because sometimes your system might do a system update and then suddenly it um, it messes up with your libraries and it doesn't work anymore. Or it's just too messy that uh, all your test configuration are there, all your other configurations are there, and it's just too messy to deal with. Or for the polyglots out here who <laughs> are working on multiple projects, um, you can be working on LAMP, uh, LAMP stack with PHP 7, or mean, mean stack, uh, .NET, Java, or Rails. Has anyone worked with Rails on, under Windows? Yeah, because um, I remember last time when I have my um, computer machine and I'm working on Windows, right? And I need to run a Rails project. Um, Rails works, Ruby on Rails works, the setup works, but some gems just doesn't work on Ruby on Rails with Windows. And that's exactly how I came to know Vagrant. So. Um, when I install Vagrant and I install Rails in, in my Vagrant machine, right, everything just works. So I package all of my stack or project for one day Vagrant for each project. But if you don't have Vagrant, right, it's really a mess and uh, it's a nightmare to uh, configure all of that in one whole machine. So how does Vagrant work? Um, so usually you will have a virtual machine. I hope everyone knows what virtual machine is. If not, it's a, if you have a watch inception, it's like dream within what dream. Virtual machine is a machine within the machine. So it has its own uh, OS, it's had, it has its own software installed, and its own um, resources or hardware <coughs> running within your machine. So <coughs> for example, you have a Mac OS, and then you can run a, um, Red Hat virtual machine inside. And then you will use VirtualBox or VMware or other pro providers to create your virtual machine. And then there's Vagrant. Vagrant will then um, wrap both the creation of virtual machine and also configuration. So it uses um, VirtualBox as a provider. It can also use v VMware or other providers. And um, you can combine it with uh, provisioners, for example, Ansible or Chef or Puppet, to automate uh, installation of the software and configuration of your virtual machine. So sometimes people ask, uh, why do we need Vagrant if I 
create a virtual machine using virtual <coughs> box. I can already use that, right? But if some of your uh, software needs to be updated, then you have to update it on virtual box. And but for Vagrant, you just update the configuration file and run the configuration file again, and it will update your VM for you. And then you can give it to any other people on your team to do the same. So we're using Vagrant. We have three steps on doing it. You have to do setup, configuration, and um, start working on Vagrant. In, in the setup, um, of course, since it's using VirtualBox, you have to install VirtualBox on your machine and also download and install Vagrant. It works on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And then you will need to pick a Vagrant base box. This Vagrant base box is actually available on these two uh, links. So uh, most probably you will be using uh, Linux uh, with PHP, so LAMP stack, and it's all there. So this Vagrant box encapsulates all those OS and software LAMP stack inside. Then you just do Vagrant in it, name of big Vagrant box. Sorry. So we are, when you're doing Vagrant init, right, uh, it doesn't create the VM for you. So it just creates the uh, Vagrant file, which is the configuration file. You need to configure uh, the VM first before it, it gets um, spin up for you. So on configuration, you will need to update the Vagrant file to uh, describe what are the uh, software you want, what are the OS you need. What are the uh, the hardware or the resource that you need, and you will also um, put there what are how you want to access your Vagrant box. Like, um, for example, you want to access it via this URL, or you want it to uh, be able to access your local folders and all. So you do it all in the Vagrant file. Once you have it, oh, there's optional. There's also optional tool to work with Chef Puppet and Ansible to this. Once you have it, you just do Vagrant Up. Vagrant Up will, on the first run, it will spin up the VM for you. And then it will configure everything, install everything that you put on your Vagrant file. So once that is up and running, then you can work on that VM. Um, by the way, Vagrant uh, is headless, so there's no GUI for your VM, so it will be quite um, light in a way that doesn't need the UI for your VM. So here are some Vagrant commands. Vagrant init will initialize your current directory. Vagrant add and uh, works hand in hand with Vagrant package. So Vagrant package will do a Vagrant base box for you. <coughs> And then vagrant, and then you will need to do vagrant add to do to import it. Vagrant up will just boot the vagrant. SSH. So once you have the vagrant up and running, right, you can SSH and do all the uh, command line inside your VM. And then vagrant destroy at uh, halt to shut down the vagrant. If you don't uh, really using it in, for example, you're running on one project and you don't want to use it. You just do Vagrant Halt so it doesn't eat up your uh, resources. <coughs> and then Vagrant Destroy to delete your Vagrant. Sample use case. So in line with uh, what Michael had uh, introduced later that we're having a workshop with uh, WordPress, right? We will create a, a Vagrant box that has uh, this, all this, Requirement so it needs to be in Ubuntu lab stack, which we might add in WordPress. Should run with hostname wordpress.local.com, and WordPress should be accessible with their favorite code. Should be accessible with their favorite text editor or IDE. So if you have uh, your Sublime or other IDE, you should be able to um, do uh, coding on on your favorite IDE, mm -hmm. and then. Um, it should work with wordpresslocal.com. Right. So 
doing this, I'll, I'll just show you a quick run through on how you do a vagrant box. So first one, we have to do setup, right? So you do set up vagrant in it. This is uh, available lamp stack on the link I provided earlier. So as you see, I created a WordPress uh, vagrant DIR, and then I do a vagrant in it. Then the vagrant file will be created for you. Then you do configuration. So in this one, um, this is the vagrant file itself. It's written in Ruby, but you don't need to know Ruby to configure this box. So, um, <coughs> Uh, the most uh, important thing here is the config VM network and the config VM sync folder. Config VM network just configures uh, the network of your machine. So you do port forwarding or you uh, apply fix IP on this VM. So as you can see, forward port guest 80, host 80, which just means that uh, your guest will run port 80 guest or your VM created from Vagrant will do port 80. Then on your host machine, you can access it via port 80 as well. And same as this, autocorrect will just, um, if the port is not accessible, it will uh, use uh, available port to do port forwarding. Then private network, I, I have here the IP, 192 something something. So this IP is just local to your machine. And um, it's not accessible outside, of course. It's just on your local machine. And we need, it, and we need this to map to the wordpress.local.com, which is the host name that we wanted to use. And the sync folder, uh, WordPress, then uh, it maps to this. So if you have the WordPress uh, folder inside with your Vagrant file, um, it will just uh, do the mapping or mount this folder inside your VM with the inside var www.html. So this way you can do the requirements for here, the last two requirements, wherein you can uh, do development on your code base and then it will just uh, since you will be configuring the www.html as your document truth later, then it will get that. Yeah. This is just the internal mapping configuration as well. Then uh, you also configure your WordPress within your big, with your Vagrant file. And you just do Vagrant up. So when, when you do Vagrant up, right, it creates the VM for you. As you can see, it does the forward forwarding. And it also um, mount your WordPress to your WordPress uh, code to var the HTML. All right. To verify that it is really installed there, you do Vagrant SSH and you just uh, so when you do Vagrant SSH, you will be on your Vagrant box and you do the, just test if the software are installed. And then you do, uh, you need to configure WordPress within your Nginx uh, size enable. Yeah, so once all the configuration are done and you do the Vagrant op, you just can see that uh, this WordPress local is running and WordPress local.com port 888, which is forwarded to VM, is running with your PHP mind. Okay, now all is set for your VM, you need to create the base box. So, when creating a, big, a base box, you see here the Vagrant package, it will uh, create the Vagrant box for you. So you, the syntax is just this, package base, name of the VM, which you can see here. Vagrant file is the absolute path of your Vagrant file, and output will be the Vagrant box. So it's a sample one. 
at the end it created a vagrant wordpress box for you so this vagrant wordpress box you can just hand it out to your team and uh, when they do vagrant up uh, they should be able to see that wordpress.local.com is working on it yeah these are the steps that uh, your team needs to do to to use this vagrant box Summary. <coughs> so um, we've discussed what Vagrant is and uh, what are the benefits that they can do. So <coughs> it keeps a consistent dev environment for each project. Um, once you have the Vagrant box, you can just uh, your team can just work on it. It encapsulate, encapsulates project dependencies. So whenever you update your system or anything or do other configuration on your local machine, that, that uh, vagrant is not uh, affected at all. And you can easily distribute project settings with, uh, since it's portable, then you can easily distribute. And here are all the references you can also take. So I think that's all for me, and I hope um, you find this useful and also try it out on your development. <coughs> Thanks.